In this video we talk about what is quantum foam and then I show you a number of clips from different modern physicists talking about the subject and how it relates to the laws of quantum gravity. So what is quantum foam? What is all this foamy crazy stuff behind me here? Quantum foam is an idea that emerges from the application of quantum physics to the fabric of space and time itself. You see, Einstein taught us in general relativity that space and time can warp and curve, and that creates the force of gravity. The idea is if you examine space on smaller and smaller scales, not everyday scales, but tiny scales, the uncertainty gets bigger and bigger, and space and time become foam-like. That's quantum foam down at the ultra-microscopic scale, quantum foam. So for the most part, general relativity describes big things, quantum theory describes little things, and that's the, the that's revolution right. that we found really powerful tools to describe big things and little things, and it's unfinished because we have two totally separate things, and we need to figure out how to connect them so we can describe everything. Right. We can we see, see that when we look, look at what is going on at the smallest and most quantum scales, scales that empty space is actually extremely busy. busy. Scientists have a name for these effervescent subatomic objects. objects. They are called virtual particles. If you look closely, you can see bubbles appearing and disappearing in an ever-changing way. For this reason, some scientists call these virtual particles quantum foam. So what we're seeing here is quantum fluctuations of the gravitational field when we see quantum mechanics applied to space-time. Space deviates from its normal flat nature and takes on a foamy character that has topological probabilistic consequences. So Roger Penrose in his book Road to Reality describes quantum foam as sometimes the idea of quantum fluctuations in the gravitational field might be appealed to according to which the very structure of space-time would become foam-like rather than resembling a smooth manifold. So here's an artist's depiction that's really interesting. It basically says, what is the nature of space-time at the Planck scale of 10 to the negative 33 centimeters or 10 to the negative 43 seconds, the time of the early universe? It has been argued that quantum fluctuations in the gravitational field may result in a seething mess of foam with multiple topology changes and where possibly detailed quantum phase relations may actually get lost at this level. So what Penrose is saying is empty space is not flat and smooth like this on the level we're used to. It's actually foamy and crazy and close and chaotic like in this animation behind me. The next book I'd like to reference on quantum foam is Kip S. Thorne's book Black Holes and Time Warps. In it he points out that John Wheeler was the first to coin the term quantum foam in 1955 when examining black holes and trying to apply the laws of quantum mechanics to them. So here's some of Thorne's embedding diagrams. They're artistic impressions but they show the probabilistic nature of how the froth evolves inside of a black hole singularity that Wheeler was studying. Let's just hear about this foam from Wheeler himself. Everyday experience, the geometry of space is smooth and flat, but as we examine it more closely, it must show oscillations. What we think of as smooth, simple space is really foam, a foam-like structure. So where did this whole minimal length in nature thing come from? Max Planck, the great German physicist who had done so much to understand radiation and set us on the track to the quantum, recognized a new, new constant of nature. And that constant, combined with the known constants of nature, the speed of light, and the constant of gravitation define a certain standard of length, a certain standard of time, a certain standard of mass, you find yourself led to a length and a mass and a time which I call the Planck length, the Planck mass, the Planck time. And it's at that enormously small scale fantastically small scale that uh, space has this must have this foam-like character. In this next part of the video I use clips of the theoretical physicist Sabine Hosenfelder to illustrate 
how you derive Planck scale physics mathematically, which essentially ends up being the quantum foam. The idea that the Planck length is a minimal length only came up after the development of general relativity, when physicists started thinking about how to quantize gravity. If you combine quantum mechanics with gravity, then the Planck length seems to set a limit to the resolution of structures. That's why physicists think nature may have a fundamentally minimal length. Max Planck, by the way, did not come up with the Planck length because he thought it was the minimal length. He came up with that simply because it's the only unit of dimensional length you can create from the fundamental constants c, the speed of light, g, Newton's constant and h bar. And this is what we call the Planck length. It is associated with an energy called the Planck energy. If you go to higher energies than that, you will just make larger black holes. So the Planck length is the shortest distance you can measure. So it seems this whole idea about a fundamental length scale in nature is related to the unification of quantum mechanics and general relativity. Is that true? We either do that if we believe quantum mechanics as understood now is correct by bringing general relativity or some extension of general relativity that describes gravity and so forth into the quantum domain that's called quantize the theory of gravity or if you believe with Einstein that quantum mechanics needs to be completed and this is my view then part of the job of finding the right completion or extension of quantum mechanics would be one that incorporated space-time and gravity. Because when you say quantum gravity, what you really mean is quantum mechanics applied to gravitational theory. So you say, let's take this wonderful formalism of quantum mechanics and make gravity fit into it. So that is what quantum gravity is meant to be. Now I'm saying, you've got to be more even-handled that gravity affects the structure of quantum mechanics too. It's not just you quantize gravity. You've got to gravitize quantum mechanics. And it's a, it's a two-way thing. It's but then when do you even get started? So that you're saying that we have to figure out a totally new ideas in exactly. there. Exactly. These laws of quantum gravity then uh, must be the fundamental laws that govern gravity. Okay guys, I want to show you the thumbnail art I made of quantum foam for this video. I'm an artist, um, I like to make like all kinds of like quantum gravity art. I have some other videos about quantum gravity art and about wrangling up all the different quantum gravity theories that exist and kind of making an ontology map for them if you will. But anyway, I did this digital art of behind me here of the Planck scale showing all the bubbling, the continual effervescence. I kind of like to think of the bubbles as universes themselves percolating into existence. But I'll try to make more videos to explain quantum gravity art. Much of the motivation is in translating physics ideas into art. So thank you for coming today.